Welcome to Hall Pass, the Virgin Islands Department of Education's exciting talk show highlighting all things education. I'm your host, Jure Ford, and today it is all about STEAM. That's science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics. But I don't need to tell you any more because we have some footage of our amazing STEAM fair for the 2016 school year. Take a look. My name is Keisha Corbett. I'm the technology coordinator for the district. And every year we have a STEM fair that's usually three days long. We have technology one day, science and math one day, for junior high and high school and then science and math for elementary school. But today is the first time we're doing this event which is called a STEAM day. And we basically just have about 400 students that's walking through the gym right now. And it's just all hands-on activities so the students get to explore the world of STEAM and they get to play with things like Osmo and they get to make balloon cars and flashlights from cardboard. So it's just a day of just exploring so that we get them interested in the world of STEAM because that's where most of the jobs are leading to now. And probably we get some students to want to participate next year in the STEM fair because of today. My name is Nisani Patricia Griffith and I am also your 2016 Miss Adelita Kankran Junior High School. So I have a question for everyone. What do you think came first, the chicken or the egg? Personally, I think the egg came first. I mean, procreation before creation. I wanted to know how much money would the Virgin Islands make producing and selling their own chicken? Because look at these crazy facts. We spend $13,165,000 on fresh, chilled, and frozen chicken. We spend $3,056,000 on prepared and preserved chicken. In total, that's $16,221,000 we're spending on chicken. I thought, we have so many farmers here, so much agriculture. Who doesn't want to get their Virgin Islands more money? Who doesn't want to keep everything right here at home? My name is Shania Nieves. I'm from St. Peter and Paul Catholic School. My project is Water Illusion. Like you could go to Disney World and you might see a Water Illusion show with different colors and different lights. How it works is so far all you see is a stage and a cup and the water doing its thing. But behind the stage and below the stage is where everything happens. There's a container that is filled with one gallon of water attached to a water pump and attached to the water pump is a clear tube. The water will be pumped up through the tube and behind the stage to a speaker because the speaker is what controls most of the illusion. The light is there to help, but since the light isn't a strong voltage, you won't get, the sound will take over. And if the light was a stronger voltage, then the light would take over. So it depends on what um, aspect you want to use, light or sound, either way, it will still work. And then it comes down and then it creates the illusion. That's how it works. Well, hi, my name is Kalina Nilsson and this station is called the Squishy Circuits. We have a pack of batteries, circuits, and lights, and we have two clays of dough. So my involvement in the science fair, I've been doing the science fair for two years now, actually three years, but I've come to district two years, and I really enjoy it. And I'm so glad this year that we actually got to go on hands and teach the younger kids, elementary kids, about science and go, you know, further involved into the science fair. My name is James Nosty from the Seventh-day Adventist School. Uh, my project for today is Are You a Super Taster? A super taster is a person who experiences a sense of taste with far greater intensity than average. Biology versus environment. In biology, your DNA makes up the amount of papillae on your tongue, which comes from the genes you pick up. In environment, you might not eat something because your mom or dad doesn't eat it, or probably religious beliefs. For example, if you're a Seventh-day Adventist, we don't eat pork, shrimp, or crab. And there are other reasons, culture. You know, we might live in America where we don't eat foods that come from Asia. So let's say when we're moving to Asia, you wouldn't want to eat a food from there, you know? That may affect whether you're picky eater or not. But if you're a super taster, you might want to try the crickets they have in Asia, right? So that brings me to my conclusion saying that 
there's really no relationship between being a picky eater and a super taster. Thank you. My name is Jaya Smith. I attend the St. Thomas and John Southern Adventist School. I'm a senior. Basically, my project today is an oxyhydrogen generator. I'm basically turning water into usable fuel in the form of hydrogen. So how this works, I mix regular water with sodium bicarbonate in the form of baking soda. This acts as an electrolyte to help the process. And I pour the water into the reservoir. This reservoir, the water runs down into the dry cell and the dry cell uses a 12 volt battery. This is a marine battery to split the molecules and send the hydrogen back up to this tube. This experiment can get loud. This is totally safe because hydrogen, when it combusts, turns into water vapor. So it's safe for the environment and it's cheaper than gas. Well, as you can tell, that was a lot going on for our STEAM Fair 2016. And I want to welcome our guests who are going to discuss with us all that happened throughout that week. I have Mr. Gerald Walters, who's the St. Thomas St. John District Science Coordinator, along with some absolutely amazing blow your mind students that participated in the fair this year. Welcome everyone. Good night. Good night. Thank you. Uh, so before we get started, I don't know if you know, but I'm going to need that hall pass. All right, here you go. Thank you. You're welcome. So can you introduce yourself for us? My name is Nisani Patricia Griffith. I am 14 years old and an eighth grader at V, Alita Kankrine Junior High School. If you can't tell by the crown, I am also <laughs> Miss Alita Kankrine Junior High School 2016. Wonderful. So Nisani, I saw you in that video footage of the fair. Do you want to talk a little bit more about it? Yes. Well, for my project, I wanted to know which came first, the chicken or the egg. Well, I didn't really want to know that. I just wanted to catch people's eye because I know not everyone, well, not every little kid wants to hear about how much money would the Virgin Islands make producing and selling their own chicken. But I did. And by doing my project, I found out the Virgin Islands would make annually about $18,000 a year producing and selling their own chicken. People don't think that's a lot, but when you really think about it and go into depth with that, you realize that from saving that money and from the 18000 that we are earning, you can do things like fix our roads, provide better school lunches and books and classrooms for our students. There's so much you can do with that $18,000 that people are not truly aware of. And not only would that make money for the Virgin Islands and for the schools, but it could attract more people, more tourists, and even bring more jobs to the Virgin Islands. And people think that it would just have to be, it, it couldn't be self-sufficient. You'd have to be dependent on WAPA. But that's not true. We have solar panels, so that's bringing in more jobs if you use solar panels to power the chicken farm. We have wind turbines, so then maybe this chicken farm should be in St. Croix, where, you know, they're known for their wind turbines there. And you can use the wind turbines along with the solar panels. And we have oceans all around us that are beautiful. Why not use the water? And instead of putting the chemical dirty water back into the ocean, why not purify it and then send it back? That way it's a constant, healthy, ongoing cycle. Throughout my project, I learned some crazy facts. Like we spent over $16 million on frozen and preserved chicken and over $2 million on eggs. And I don't know if that shocks you, that shocks but it me. definitely <laughs> shocked me. I also decided to learn some facts about the chicken because if I'm doing a chicken project, I gotta know about my product, correct? I learned that in farms, they put our chickens on growth hormones. Okay. The growth hormones cause our chickens to be fully grown in up to six weeks. When chickens are left up to their own devices, they're fully grown in five months and still continue to grow two months after that. So that got me to thinking, do I want to put something in my body that takes six weeks to grow? Or do I want to put something in my body that's healthy and it's doing its fully natural growth? And even then they say, you have to use the growth hormones. You have to, there's no other way to feed your animals and keep them healthy. But I disagreed because I live in the Virgin Islands and I know that agriculture is a big part of the place and the area that we live in. So why not pull some of the scraps from the fruit that the farmers use and we're also giving money to the farmers that we have here in the Virgin Islands and helping them with their product as well and feeding the animals we have here. Wow. 
Okay, so it's not just science, it's business, it's everything. <laughs> Mr. Walter, can you tell me how was the fair? Well, the fair was... Clearly uh, it was great. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get a chance to judge Miss Adelita Conquest's project, but... Uh, the fair was excellent this year. We, it, it grows as we move along. I, I don't know if you realize we moved from science, then we added technology, engineering, and math. We call it STEM for five years. And then finally this year, the uh, theme was amalgam uh, amalgamating the arts into STEM. Mm -hmm. So we now have STEAM. Uh, we didn't fully engage the arts part because technically really what we need to do really is bring in art projects and have them judged. Yeah. So that's the next step. But uh, on Tuesday, we had the technology fair. I have two great uh, coordinators working with me. We have a technology coordinator, Ms. Keisha, Keisha Corbett. You saw her on the video. Uh, this is her second year, so this is actually only her second fair. Mm -hmm. And then we have a brand new math coordinator, Mr. Avon Benjamin, who did the mathematics. So on Tuesday, we did technology. On Wednesday, we did the elementary math and science fair. On Thursday, uh, on, uh, no, actually on Wednesday, we did the secondary math and science. On Thursday, we went into a STEAM day. And the reason we did the uh, secondary first is because we brought back all the winners from the secondary level to do presentations for the elementary school. And on Friday, we finished with the uh, elementary part of the fair. So you had a lot of uh, projects to judge. Not only that, it's actually uh, the technology part alone has like six parts. Math and science only have two. So the math was uh, math engineering and math problem solving, and the science was actually only science demonstration and science research and experiments. Okay. And I see that, you know, this is in our typical hall pass stage. We have something going on, and I want to know what. We have some students that will be giving some demonstrations on some of the projects that they presented at the fair. Yes, we actually brought one of the winners from the uh, math problem investigation section, and one from the intermediate science demonstration section. Okay. Both and are first place winners. Oh, oh, so we got, a, we got a queen and we got some winners in the house. Okay. The queen won first place too, by the way. <laughs> oh, oh, excuse me, madame. So let me then see what you guys are talking about. Would you guys like to share with us? Who wants to go first? You bus. <laughs> All right. Okay, come on up, senior. What's hey, your name? My name is Priyalt Atamazam. I am a senior at Charlotte Amani High School. And today I have with me a wind turbine. And my investigation was on math. I built a turbine that held a constant speed of, that produced a voltage of about, of about 0.89 volts. And my real world investigation was how do I increase its rotational speed? And in order to increase the rotational speed, at first hard to understand how does a wind turbine work in the science world. So I went to physics and I learned about the magnetic flux. Now the magnetic flux says that in order for the turbine to rotate, it must receive an uneven amount of pressure on the blades. Then it gave me a formula and this formula went by NBS cosine theta. N represents the number of coil. Um, B represented the area of the coil, and S represented the amount of um, coil I have in the, in, um, S represented the magnet, the size of the magnet, and cosine represented the angle between the magnet and the coil. Once I understood that, I now knew that if I was to do the derivative, then I would be able to determine the speed once the turbine is in rotation, and the, the derivative gave me NBS Co um, sine theta and a new variable was introduced. This was W. This was the speed. And once I, once I found out that I am able to manipulate the speed, I then came to the conclusion that gas would be the best fit to increase the rotational speed of my turbine. And here with me, I will demonstrate that if I power a turbine with a constant speed without gas, it will not be much. Okay, so this was the 
um, standard speed without the gas. And once I discover the formula, I managed to increase the speed four times faster because I introduced gas that held a one centimeter diameter. Originally, the formula stated that I would be able to increase the speed 10 times faster because we took into consideration exterior forces such as friction and on evening amount of wind, we then reduce the speed to four times faster. Oh, wow, okay. Yeah. This, this is how it will be with the gas. And I shall say thank you to the Maxwell Law, because if it wasn't for Maxwell Law, I would not be able to understand the magnetic flux. Thus, I would not be able to increase the speed of the wind turbine, which we use to uh, make mechanical energy so we can power our houses and our cities. Thank you. Thank you, Braille. And I want to know then, what made you think of doing this project? I heard a lot of math. I heard a lot of science. I looked, heard a lot of terms that I haven't, I've never heard before. Uh -huh. What made you decide to do this? Well, um, originally, I built this turbine for the Kid Wind Challenge. And it's a competition that the Department of Energy holds um, to um, have schools compete to see who can build the best turbine. And once I heard about the science fair, I said, whoa, maybe this would be an opportunity for me to explain to the teams that actually built turbine, but did not understand its role and how it works. I decided that, okay, I would like to investigate uh, on this so that maybe in the future, if I'm, I am looking to work with renewable energy, I will have a first-hand experience on how turbine works. Thus, I will be able to um, produce turbines that can build at a rate that can power a city and that can power a city, multiple of cities, in um, a certain amount of time. Wonderful. I, I just got to give you, let's all just give him a round of applause. That was incredible. Thank you, Thank you so much for sharing that with yeah. us. And we also have another demonstration. Can you tell us your name? My name is Deshaun Hodge, and I'm going to show you guys how to make homemade soup. Wonderful. So first of all, you need your safety equipment. So you put on your safety equipment. Safety first, right, Mr. Walters? <laughs> and also I have here soybean oil, coconut oil, olive oil, and sodium hydroxide. But even though sodium hydroxide is a dangerous chemical, when combined with the oils, it performs a chemical reaction called saponification. And saponification is the chemical reaction between sodium hydroxide and oil. So when the sodium hydroxide and the oils are mixed, it creates the soap and also helps the soap to harden. Now I will mix for five seconds and stop so that the hand mixer doesn't overheat. Wait, ain't coming on. It's not Power. coming on? Mm -mm. Just, just pretend like you're stirring it. Okay. Yeah. This is just a demonstration to see a yeah. step by step a little bit. So after you, you stir it for how long? Five seconds? You mix it for five seconds, then you stir it ten times. Okay. And you keep doing that until it reaches trace. And when it 
richest trees, you add your essence oil. Now, essence oil is an oil that was extracted from a plant at or the root to get our essence oil, and we add it in. And the essence oil helps, makes it get ticking faster. And then we have our mold to pour it in, but it's not ticky enough to pour into the mold. So, and also when done, mix it. When you wait for a week to cure, to heat, harden, and this is what you get. Oh, wow. Wow. Looks like soap I could get from the store. Yeah. yeah. And it has different benefits. Oh, it smells to good too. Different, yeah. It has different benefits to the different kinds of oils. And this is one that was made four weeks up ago. And what kind of other flavors do you well, have? Well, it depends on which type you want. You it have things like neem, spearmint, moringa, and various types. And also is it have, it's beneficial to acne and your skin. And to test to see if the soap is cured, it takes four weeks to cure, which is a month. You put the pH tester on, and once it turns purple, it isn't cured. So you can't bathe with it yet. And if it doesn't turn purple, that means it's cured and you can be good to go. Yes. Okay, perfect. And that concludes my project. And what happens when you bathe with the one that has that purple pH? Well, color? it can burn your skin because oh. of the sodium hydroxide. And all, but when cured, you can, it will soap up and bathe. This hair will, uh, if the sodium hydroxide gets onto you in the solid form, it will absorb the moisture out of your skin and burn you. Oh my goodness, I'm just so impressed. I, <laughs> I don't know what to say, thank you. And in case the sodium hydroxide gets on top of you, you can just pour a little vinegar over the sodium hydroxide to stop it from burning. Good job. Let's give him a round of applause. Again, so much terminology, so much science. Mr. Walters, these kids. Sapanification. Oh, don't even get go there with me. <laughs> I mean, these kids are doing such a wonderful job in the field of science. I just wanted to say one thing about Brial's experiment. This is one of the few experiments that could have fit under engineering, mm -hmm. science investigation, or science, dem uh, science demonstration. When I saw it as a math investigation, I didn't think he would win. But listening to him, he really knows a lot of math, so it really stood out. And why is STEAM so important for our kids? STEAM, well, science and technology uh, and math, they, they all go together. Mm -hmm. uh, you saw the STEAM day where we let the students become more active instead of them being a the presentation. That was an opportunity for 30 students from each school to come down to UVI, and the school selected them and spent the entire day doing hands-on stuff. And the students actually left there feeling good about it. Because, uh, I mean, I visit a lot of science classrooms, and a lot of teachers uh, don't really like to get into doing a lot of science and math, mm -hmm. even though the students love it so much. So that gave them an opportunity to do some things that their teachers uh, may not have let them do in, in, in class. So, so they were able to explore and become is, adventurous This is the more. only way we're going to get students to become engineers and, and doctors uh, at, a, at a wider uh, range than we have right now. And so what about the future um, as it holds for the, the winners of the fair, um, science as a whole in, in the district? What's going well, on? It would be nice if the winners were given a trip to go present at a bigger level, but actually... We really don't have the funds for that. After they win as the uh, district champ, that's about it for they now. Just, they just get that title, and you guys become great role models. It looks good on the um, resume, though. Yeah. Oh, and speaking of resume, you are actually 
graduating soon, right? Yes. My, my senior in the house. What, what do you want to be? What's your future plans? Um, I plan to um, become a mechanical engineer, um, gain a bachelor's in mechanical engineer, and I plan to um, specialize in the automobile industry, um, certainly with um, planes. Um, furthermore, I'd like to um, work um, with renewable energy, such as wind turbine, um, solar panels, and perhaps new source of um, wind, I mean, um, renewable energy. So this was great practice for us. Yes, you enjoyed this? I enjoyed it, you know. I actually got to learn um, about um, the rotation of the, the, um, the, the motors because, you know, most of the items we use today are compromised of a motor. And if one can understand that, then he or she should be able to build um, an apparatus that can work very well, so. Wonderful. And so, oh. Again, Mr. Walters, you, you guys are clearly doing such a great job. Uh, I want to then ask you, Deshaun, what made you choose doing soap? Well, I have my, my family and I have a family business that we make soap and we also sell soap. So we usually be at home making soap and sending off island and things for for people and people from St. Kitts and Anguilla and different places are ordering soup. That's great. So you get to use the science that you learn and apply it to everyday life. Yeah. So my queen, <laughs> I'm coming right to you. I want to know how was it participating in the fair? Well, this is actually my third year participating in the district science fair. And every year I enjoy it more and more. And this year, since the arts was incorporated and it was STEAM now, I found it even more interesting and I was even more excited to look at the projects and see what people brought in, their different ideas and different takes. And it's not just fun to look at the projects, but to meet the people who did the projects as well because they have stuff to say about your projects and they have questions about your, about your projects and you also have a question about theirs. Well, thank you so much, everyone. I really appreciate it, but it looks like our hall pass has expired and our time is up. We'll see you next week on Hall Pass. I'm Jere Ford, and this was Steam Fair 2016.